Attracting love is simple. It is so simple. We make it complicated, but it has to do with simply being ourselves. You probably heard the saying before, just be yourself. Just be yourself, bro. Just be yourself. And it's, here's the thing. That's true. It is just be yourself. Now the question is, who is the real me? Who am I really? Is the nice guy people, ple people pleaser person, the version of me? Is that really me? Who am I really? But when you're being yourself, you're not trying, you're not attached to outcome, you're leading in your own life, you're in your own frame, you're not needing stuff from other people. That's why being yourself is so damn attractive. And in this episode, I wanna show you step by step how to have these little shifts when it comes to attracting love that will change everything, that will help you to embody the energy that you came here to embody. And then also we're gonna be going through that of Instagram and looking at all these blocks that people said they have to attracting love. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna break them down so that we can remove the blocks to attract love easier than ever. So with that being said, let's get into it. Welcome back to another episode on the Aaron Dowdy Podcast. My name's Aaron and today, we are going to be going into all of your biggest blocks that you may be experiencing when it comes to attracting love and what you must do so that this next year you attract love easier than ever. And this is also going to include much of the questions that people are asking on Instagram. I put inside of my story, I said, what are your biggest blocks to attracting love and the biggest negative beliefs? And I'm gonna go through and in a way, debate you guys. I'm not gonna debate you, but you know what I mean. I'm gonna break down these different beliefs to help you release that of the things that are holding you back from actually attracting love. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. And in this episode, I'm also gonna be sharing with you that number one secret that is the key to you do actually attracting love. And it is so simple that most people overcomplicate it. Even me in my own life right now, even though I have attracted love, I am in this next phase, I guess, of my business. And I actually just got off the phone with a Zoom call with my assistant. And I'm doing this like challenge right now. And I'm realizing that just being vulnerable with you guys right now, I'm like, in a way, I'm trying to make something like different than what it is. And that trying is creating resistance, which is actually blocking me from the result that I want. The reason I share that is because I think many of you may be doing the same thing when it comes to love, because I know I did for a long time. I overcomplicated the process. Now to explain why, like this, the context of what I'm talking about right now, I'm running this challenge called the 21 day magnetic abundance challenge. And, uh, it's like, I'm going live, not all 21 days in a row, but I'm going live very consistently, sometimes for an hour, an hour and a half a day. And I'm coaching people and helping bring people through a process of transformation. And back in, uh, like June of last year, I did the 21 day magnetic love challenge. The love challenge had almost 4,000 people that bought it and 800 to a thousand people every single day that showed up live. And it became this like thing that like took on a life of its own. And I didn't try at all. I was just doing it. I was being it. I also, uh, close to that time of running that, like that thing, I, I, uh, attracted love in my life. So I was very much living in it and it was just so effortless. It was just so natural for me to do that. And by like the fifth or sixth day, I'd bring people on to coach and almost everyone I brought on, I'm not saying this to brag or anything, by the way, cause I think it's the container, but every person I brought on, and I'm not selling it by the way, I don't even care. I'm not, I'm not saying any of this stuff because I'm trying to get you guys to buy it or anything. I don't give a shit. I'm just sharing with you the actual, so you can understand the context. Every person I brought on was like raving about how awesome it's been, how much it's changed their life and stuff like that. And I'd like get into what I'm coaching them about, but I said, you know, uh, this is the most powerful thing I've done and blah, blah, blah. And it was like such a cool feeling. Cause I'm like, wow, this is really adding value. Well, because I did that in June and now I'm doing one and it's January when I recorded this in, in uh, 2022, I, I'm, I'm like putting a lot of pressure on myself that I'm like, everyone has to have an extremely transformative like, experience by the third day or it's all not worth it, you know? And I can tell that I'm like trying to make it something. And I was talking to my assistant, she's like, why don't you just, you know, like the, the time it's most enjoyable is when I'm just being myself. When I'm being myself, 
I'm like getting the best results. I'm helping people the most. And it's like, I'm just being myself and therefore getting the results. But the mind is like complicating things. There's another aspect of me too, just to bring this into, it's all metaphor. But um, I was trying to figure out a way of doing this live call that I was doing where I was like teaching how to shift into abundance and like I was sharing stories from my life. I was trying to figure out how can I also make this piece of content relatable because if I might want to post this one day on YouTube in, or in a podcast so that you guys could hear what it's like behind the scenes of these things. And I could tell that because I knew I wanted to put it on YouTube while I was making it, I wasn't as present with the people that were there because I was also trying to like make it under the context of YouTube. So I was present, but also focusing on like three different things, trying to hold it all together, trying to like put a lot of pressure on myself to make it a certain way. And because I was doing all of this, I was infusing resistance into the process and it just wasn't as natural as it could have been. And when I was talking to my, um, you know, someone on my team, she, she was saying like, just be yourself. And it's so simple, but it, and it's funny because I was thinking to myself, that's also the key and the cure to attracting love. That's it. Be yourself. And the funny thing though, is the way we like to complicate this. We have, we like to say, oh, well, you know, cause we think that we aren't good enough the way we are. We think we need to be differently than we are. And this also poses the question, like, who am I? Because when I look at the old nice guy version of me, was that the real me? Or is this version of Aaron the real me? That's what gets confusing. It's like, well, who am I really? You know, uh, is it the, it's the people like, cause some people, they will argue. When I ever talked to my dad about this, he kind of argue, not argues with me, but I kind of poke at him. And sometimes I need to stop poking at him because I realize it doesn't always help. But I'm like, dad, why are you so damn nice all the time? Cause my dad's like the nicest guy in the world. And I had to shed the nice guy pattern. And I can see that um, like my dad as the nice guy, I can see that he's attracted a lot of situations in his life to almost provoke him or to kind of like tug on him to move into a different like warrior aspect of his life and to not be so passive. He attracted my ex-stepmom who's a narcissist. Um, he's attracted certain positions. I can even see that, I don't wanna, sometimes I, I share too much about my family members and their lives and stuff. And then they find out. And then I feel like it's like, I, I should have like, <laughs> you know, said something, but I could see how maybe like my dad would have got a promotion a long time earlier if he was more assertive with himself in some ways, I'll just say that. And, um, and I, sometimes I ask him because I had to shed the nice guy thing like a year or two ago, but because I was a nice guy, I was attracting people that met me at that level, but it, it was like, they almost, I didn't get that respect. I wasn't as, uh, polarizing. I wasn't the real me. The nice guy wasn't the real Aaron. The nice guy was this, it was safe for me to be nice and want people to feel happy and feel people like to please them and always like attracting people. I felt like I needed to fix, but that wasn't actually the real authentic me. So there is a caveat with this, but the key to you attracting love, the key to you even making more money in abundance is you being yourself, but it is you being your real self, your real authentic self without filters that may require you to do a little bit of the inner work so that you release aspects of yourself that you've been holding back. Sometimes I can tell that I hold myself back from being the real me because I am afraid of what other people will think of me. Like for example, one thing that you may not know from my channel that I, sometimes I don't share is like, I've been afraid for so long to share on my YouTube channel or even just in social media. Like I don't post the food that I eat. The reason I don't post the food that I eat is because a lot of people assume that I'm vegan because I was vegan also years ago. I was vegan. I think I even made, I'm a v why I'm vegan video like six, five, six years ago. And and I was at the time vegan and I believed that, but then I went through a phase where I transitioned out of being vegan. I didn't feel called to being vegan anymore. I, I felt like, uh, you know, I could kind of see it as more of a, of a belief system. I think it does work for some people. I'm not saying it's horrible. I'm not saying it's bad, um, but it wasn't optimal for me is what I realized. And I've known that a lot of the people that follow me that, share with me like, uh, or that, that like follow me on YouTube are, or maybe vegan, or maybe eating a very specific diet like that. 
And I've been afraid to share that because I'm like, uh, there was a part of me that was like afraid of rejection. That's afraid of people not approving. Like I'm, a, I'm somebody that's people pleasing. Everyone has to like me. But the thing is, is it's not actually authentic for me to like kind of not share certain aspects of my life. Maybe, I mean, not that on social media, I have to share when I'm at like a sushi restaurant and stuff, but I can just tell that like, there's aspects of my own shadow that I've been like afraid to share because afraid of what other people will think, you know, and I can see now that I look back, um, that I'm holding myself back and that becomes a part of my own shadow. Like, why do I need everybody to like me? Why do I need everyone to approve of me? You know, I, I like, I don't, I don't care what the, what the hell other people eat. You know, I let, I, I don't, and because of that, I have that mentality. It's like, why am I afraid that if I would share something like that, that I'd get a lot of backlash? Why does it even ma matter? From, from a certain perspective, not that I'm like telling people what to do. I don't know. I don't know if I should even get into that. <laughs> I don't know. Who cares? I think that um, one thing that's funny that, that that's like just this idea that I have when it comes to the whole vegan thing is, um, you know, plants are consciousness. And they are also, yes, there, I guess there's a difference in the density between a plant and, a, and an animal, but at the same time, they're all, we're all connected. We're all one thing. So when we're eating plants, we're eating like other aspects of ourself because we're all infinite intelligence anyways. And when we eat animals, that's like another version of it. Um, so it's just interesting to me because there's a part of me, even as I'm explaining this right now, I'm like being very, very like careful with how I say things because I can feel inside of my body like this fear come up. It's like, what if I say this? But it's not even if I say something wrong. It's like, how will people take me if I say that in a way that sounds not compassionate? Of course, I'm a compassionate person. And of course, I love animals and all this stuff. But because I were to eat fish and meat, it's like, it's like there's a part of me that's afraid of being rejected. So the reason I'm sharing all of this with you, and the whole plant thing I was saying is like, plants are like also consciousness beings. So like, if we really loved plants so much, maybe we wouldn't eat them as much. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's just a, it's just a funny way of looking at like this, pl this plant, this has more consciousness and life energy than this thing. And we like put them on pedestals in different ways when they're all just one, we're all part of this like source consciousness anyways. I think of course there's a way something is done. Like the, the meat that I do eat, is organic. It's like grass fed. It's like treated, you know, very different way than like some of the other stuff, I guess. But anyways, the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I want to be vulnerable and I want to really encourage you guys to go into your own vulnerability and ask yourself, why are you sometimes maybe afraid of what other people think of you? But when you hold yourself back from being the real you, it's like you're holding yourself back from attracting people that would really resonate with you, or at least resonate with the courage that you might have to share something. Like, even if I just said that, about the whole vegan thing and you're vegan, there might be a part of you that respects the fact that I said something that I was afraid to say. Do you see what I mean? Like, even though you might not agree with it, you know? And I think that we're moving into a time of 20, like these next years and stuff where it's like really accepting other people and what they believe, but also being and having the courage to really share who we really are, you know? Um, so it's like this interesting thing. Also just like not trying to talk people. I, I, I get people that reach out to me a lot that are like, they've been maybe even vegan for a couple of years. And then they say like their health is declining. They're having issues. I have a friend of mine that was like raw vegan and vegan for like 10 years and her teeth are falling out. And she literally had to start eating meat because her teeth long-term wasn't like having, uh, she was like losing, I don't know what it was her and her dad, both they're like losing their teeth and they have to like do things to like mitigate that. Um, and my girlfriend was vegan for so long and she's just now branching out of that. But I could just tell that it is, uh, it's something people really feel trapped in. They feel trapped in their own beliefs. They feel, uh, trapped in their own perspectives. And sometimes it's not even because it's really what they want, but they're afraid of what other people will think. That's what is like really interesting to me. Now, the reason I'm sharing this is also because I can see that the answer to attracting love, we'll get into the, I'm going to start like looking into these things in a second in my Instagram with like all the things people say that are blocking them from love. Um, but the key to attracting love is being yourself. Now being yourself also means being aware of how you are leading in your own life. When I say leading in your own life, I mean, do you have a vision for who you are and what are your values? Values are kind of like belief systems, but they're like virtues that you live by. 
The thing is, is most of our values are on autopilot from younger in life. My values back in the day being the people pleaser was I craved other people's validation. I craved significance. I craved uh, mitigating tension. So I, I craved comfortability, being comfortable. And I can see that that was very much keeping me in a little bit of a box. Then I go through my awakening and then I start questioning some of my beliefs about reality and, and just even about the whole nice guy thing. And I realized that that wasn't the real me. Uh, and as I realized that that wasn't the real me, me being like the nice guy and people pleasing, trying to fix people, I started asking myself, who am I really? What do I really value? And one of the things I really value is vulnerability, authenticity. These are more important than validation now. Because in my mind, I value these differently and I embody it by expressing things. Like I think the thing that a lot of people in my channel resonate to me that watch me on YouTube or my podcast is I am vulnerable. I'm vulnerable and I share things from my life that maybe some people wouldn't share. You know, even sometimes the things I'm afraid to share, you know, and the thing is, is like, that's something I value more than any, than, more than even people's validation. You know, I think I'm still like minutely aware of like what people think and feel about certain things I say, but like, I'm much more unapologetic now than I used to be. But the funny thing is as I started getting clear as to who I am, and as I started to understand my own sense of self-worth and self-value, it made everything easier. That was when I attracted love. That's when I, I had blocks in love. I didn't feel worthy. I felt a lot of shame because um, I thought it was because of like uh, past relationships, but actually it stemmed back to like childhood, like being a child and, and having like, uh, you know, different dynamics that were going on that made me feel like I wasn't heard. I wasn't seen. I'm not worthy. My parents divorced. Obviously it's because I wasn't good enough. That's just how as little kids we are. We're little narcissists who think the world revolves around us. So I can look back now and I can very clearly see that uh, I had to redefine myself and redefine my own values. And once I started doing that and I started being the most authentic version of me and I started stopped caring so much about what other people thought and I focused on being vulnerable and being authentic and showing my true desires, that was also something that was like depolarizing love dynamics was I was afraid of showing my true desires towards uh, like if I was into someone or attracted to someone. That's why with my girlfriend, when I first met her, I was very clear and with my intentions of like not just being friends with her and the nice guy is afraid of the rejection. So we'll mitigate that at all costs. But I had to get aware of these things. And as I started to be myself and as I started to be that version of me, um, everything changed. A lot of the blocks removed. Uh, I, I did the childhood stuff where I became aware of the shame that I had growing up. And I realized that a lot of the stuff that I internalized as a kid was not my fault. It was my parents' stuff, not mine. And as I started to redefine myself and I started honestly also opening my heart, I was realizing I was like, it was safe for me to block love from my life by talking myself out of it. And what I would do is I would find a million reasons why certain people I was dating was not good for me. And I would like talk down things before I even went into them. And that caused a big block because I literally was not attracting people into my life because I was judging them, which was also making them judge me. People feel what you feel. So the biggest changes in my life when it came to attracting love that changed everything was when I started being the real me. One of the parts of you being the real you, by the way, is you doing and being what you're passionate about. Me making videos was very important, I think, because it's me in my most authentic vibration. Even Heather says, my girlfriend, she says that she's known of me for years and always been attracted to me for years because of just my energy and how I've been. And she always felt like there'd be a connection there. But it's like when you are in the most authentic version of you, people feel that off of you and they're more likely to be attracted to you. So first off, it's being the real you. It's letting go of the shadow aspects like the nice guy, the people pleaser, which is there to keep you safe from tension or from people judging you. And as you begin to look at that, a lot begins to change. And then opening your heart was, was a very powerful part of the process for me too. Uh, I had to open my heart and stop judging a uh, woman I was going on dates with. I had to stop judging and talking myself out of stuff. And um, that was like very important when it came to it too. And honestly, I, another big part of this too is I had to say no to past patterns, which is very challenging to do. I had to say no to past patterns. Of, I had a pattern of choosing people that weren't choosing me. And it, I realized it was because I wasn't choosing myself, but also I just didn't feel like I was worthy enough for people to really choose me. 
And I would find myself in relationships with people that I was trying to sell myself to, that I was trying to like show how worthy I am versus just being worthy. And when I started being worthy and feeling worthy and understanding my own value and feeling that from within, that's when everything really changed. So this are the, these are things that I encourage you to look at when it comes to attracting love in, in this year in general. And these are all things that uh, have really changed my life. So, um, and, and things happened very quickly when I did that. Like I have a friend right now that's in like a, like a certain pattern. And I can tell that she's in this like pattern where she's like, she's keeping like an ex around and they're kind of going back and forth and stuff. But I can tell that until she says no to that pattern, she will not say, she won't say yes to anything else. So she's kind of playing that out right now. And it's interesting to me because I also did that for, for a long time was like playing out old patterns. Once you say no, when you let go of a past relationship of a past part of yourself, of an ex, you then make room for something new. So to attract love within the next year, um, that's something else that you want to do. You want to let go of the past dynamics, the past relationships, and you want to realize, whoops, I'm on my Instagram, like looking at the it accident, went to someone else's story. <laughs> um, you want to look at these aspects of yourself if you are being attached to the past, because if you're staying attached to the past, then you're not letting or making room for anything new to come into your life. And if you say yes to things that aren't serving you, if you're, if you're, you have to say no to things that aren't serving you for you to say yes to things that are, that will serve you. And that was something I had to do. And I had, I had the courage to also put myself out there and I had my courage to like express my true feelings and my true vulnerability. And as I did that, so much of my life began to change. Now let's look at some of the blocks that people said. I said, what are your biggest blocks to attracting love? And let me read some of them. So let's see. Someone said, Mr. Nice Guy. So that's exactly what I was saying earlier. So for a long time, I was very nice and I wanted people's validation, but understand that the nice guy is active to keep people from knowing who you really are. There's a level of shame that comes when if you were to really be the real you that you're afraid to show, you're afraid to show that you have desire. You might have desire um, for sex. You might have desire to connect with somebody else and you might be ashamed of it. You might be, a, you might be ashamed of um, having opinions that are polarizing because you care what other people think. Here's what I think. If you are being Mr. Nice Guy or Mr. Nice Girl or People Pleaser, growing up, you had to be the glue maker. You had to be the person that glued the family together. You had to be the person that made everything all right because there was so much chaos and you avoided the tension. But the thing is, is that is a defense mechanism that is keeping you in a pattern that no longer serves you. And you have to become aware of that. That's what I had to do. I had to realize the nice guy thing wasn't working. I would feel drained. I'd have problems setting boundaries. I would feel like people would walk on me. People would think could take advantage of me. I wasn't expressing the real me. And then I, I woke up. And when I woke up, that's when things began to change. And you have to be aware that the nice guy is just a defense mechanism. People pleasing is just a defense mechanism. And as you become aware of that, you begin to take your power back. And that's what you begin to do is take your power back. Take your power back and understand that that nice guy stuff is not real. It's not authentic. And when you do, you then go have vulnerability. That's the cure It's vulnerability, sharing how you really feel like somebody that's afraid to talk to maybe a girl or a, a girl that's afraid to talk to a guy. They're afraid of the sh of the rejection of the abandonment. People pleasing and nice guyness is also an abandonment wound. You're afraid of being abandoned, but you've already caused the initial abandonment, the abandonment of the self. You've abandoned the real you. Come back home, come back home and realize that you came here to be the most unapologetic version of you. You came here to be the real you. You came here to express yourself. Not everyone's going to like you and it's okay, but you came here to express that. And when you start owning that parts of yourself, that's what changes. Give yourself permission to be yourself, knowing that you're also enough. And that's if, as I go through these right now, some people are saying things like, uh, thinking about my ex. Someone says, you know, sometimes we fight for trying to make it right with an ex because we think that that was our one shot. That was our one shot at love. And sometimes we're even fighting for toxic patterns. We might be fighting for codependency. We might have somebody that represents to us our mom or our dad growing up. And we're like fighting because that's familiar family familiar. These are very similar words because we will fight for familiar emotions. 
And you're, you might be fighting for your ex because it reminds you of a similar energy dynamic growing up. After my ex stepmom left my life when I was 15, I attracted a girlfriend that was very jealous, had to know where I was at at all times, uh, always paranoid I was gonna cheat on her, um, and she gave me a lot of rules because I liked rules. It felt familiar. I didn't like rules. That's the funny thing. I, I was always given rules that I had to break out of. And then after she, I broke up with her, after four years too long, should have broken up after a year, but four years, stayed in it longer than I should have. Oh, interesting. My dad did the same thing. We tend to follow some of the patterns of our parents. I then got transferred to a better shoe department at Nordstrom's where the manager was the same as my ex-stepmom. Familiar. Family. This feels normal. I'm used to this emotion. So realize that you thinking about your ex and that you being attached to your ex might be just a way you're fighting for familiar emotions. Have the courage to let it go. And what you feel like you've lost is meaning. Everything in life is fundamentally neutral. When we're afraid of losing something, it's because we're afraid we won't find new meaning. It's like the meaning I have in my ex is the like only meaning I can ever create. I'm afraid of letting that go because then I'll have no meaning. No, that's why a lot of times after breaking up with someone, it's good to find meaning in other things. Whether it's your passion, it's being around friends and family, you will find new meaning. There's like 8 billion people out there in the world. And you're fighting, believing that there's only there's one person is it. It's the one. And set realize that you are the one. Neo. <laughs> have you guys seen Matrix yet? I haven't seen it, but I'm going to see it soon. Maybe by the next time I do it, a podcast episode, I'll let you guys know what I thought of it. But I'm a huge Matrix fan. Um, someone said shame. Yep, I had a lot of shame. Believing I'm broken. Shame is also a lot of times related to unworthiness. If you feel like you're unworthy, like we, we tolerate in our lives what we believe we deserve. So if we believe that we deserve someone that's treating us like shit, we will keep that active and that will be our life. One of the keys though that really changes everything is when you start going into your shame and your worthiness and you start becoming aware of it. Now remember, shame breeds in the dark. Shame does not want to be aware of. And that's why people have shame. Like say a, a nice guy is afraid to show that they have sexual desire for someone they're dating or someone they want to go take on on a date. It's like, they, that's why a lot of times nice guys and people pleasers stay in the friend zone because they're just f fucking friendly. They just like, they're really good at easing tension. There's no polarity, but they're afraid that somebody's going to find out. Like men are afraid that people are going to find out that they actually have desire. Women are afraid they're people are going to find out they actually have desire. That's interesting because it's natural, but we're afraid of it. If you would just own it, give yourself permission to own it, then that'd be a different story. But when you bring vulnerability, that's a way of bringing it into the light because you're not afraid to show it. And yes, you could still get rejected, but you'll find that a lot of times when you let go of the fear or you go into it, it either doesn't happen or it's not nearly as big as you make it in your mind. But that's one of the other things that's really changed my life is going into that shame and feeling it and realizing, you know, when you feel it, you heal it. So let's see what else. Yeah, fear of rejection, opening up an intimacy. That was another one for me. Even when I got into the relationship with Heather, she's so emotionally available and so nurturing that it was like I had to get used to that because my body was not in my mind just I wasn't used to being having someone that would love me that much and it was like almost like a sabotage thing where like I didn't think I was worthy of it how could someone even like me this much and it required me going into the unfamiliar unfamiliar because in my family growing up it was not a familiar feeling for me to get if I was being touched it was I was being hit that was the way I, I was uh, like treated from 7 to 15 years old with my ex-stepmom. And our real mom wasn't allowed to be in our life until afterwards. But I had to let that, like, that, that, that fear go. Because if I was touched before, it was like something negative. And it's like, oh, now I'm, it's like I have someone that's really nurturing me. And it's funny because it's always what I, I felt like I wanted. But when I started getting it, there was like a lot of, there was like a fear of intimacy that came up. It was like there was fear that came up because it was unfamiliar. And when we're in the unknown, that feels kind of scary. So I saw my friend this too, that that's going through like where she's like kind of still 
keeping like an X thing alive and I could just tell the process she's going through. But also I was like, the next step for you is you're going to find someone that is emotionally available and then you're going to have to focus on being present with it because it's going to kind of scare you because you're not used to it. And in the beginning of my relationship with Heather, that's one thing I had to do is I had to confront that part of myself that wasn't used to that nurturing. And I had to like, I had to uh, realize that I could let that fear go and be present with it and that it was really something that I wanted too. But sometimes people also, they may be fighting to stay in like past relationships that don't work because they're afraid of finding somebody that would actually be present with them, that would actually be emotionally available. We always attract people that are like equal to what we, what we're currently experiencing. When I worked a nine to five job I hated, I always had girlfriends that worked nine to five jobs I hated. When I started doing what I love, I was always with, I've always been with someone that does what they love. So there's a difference there. So let's see, someone says afraid of commitment. The commitment is normally a trust issue because one of your parents or somebody uh, broke trust with you. Could have been uh, abuse. Um, could have been, they said they were going to do something they didn't, could have been ex cheated on you. These are all things that may have happened. And then you're now afraid of commitment because you're afraid of that, of being hurt. And also you have to become aware of your beliefs too. A lot of times we'll have beliefs that like to be in a relationship represents lack of freedom. Become aware of what your stories are, what your beliefs are. As you, as you become aware of that, you can realize, oh, you know, I've had similar, I've had similar fears before because it's like, oh, freedom. I have a business. I have this, I have that. But when you think that something's going to like block you, if you had it, then it's like, you're not going to attract it because you have all these negative connotations to it. So become aware of your stories about it. What is your story about love? What is your story about a relationship? Does it mean you lose all your freedom? What if you attract, then maybe also you had parents that were ultra controlling growing up or something. And you think that if you were in a relationship, then it would be a loss of freedom. Why does ha being in a relationship have to be a loss of freedom? You see the difference there? There's some people that give a meaning to relationships that is ultimate freedom because then you could do stuff with someone else. You see what I mean? But that feeling of being trapped or whatever that fear is, it's because you might have felt that growing up. And I had controlling parents growing up and stuff like that. So I know... I know what that's like, but you have to be willing to go into that and become aware of it. Become aware of the stories. Thinking and feeling undesirable, somebody said. If we feel undesirable, it's a worthiness thing. It means we don't feel worthy and we're not valuing ourselves. We're not, you know, when you are it's also, it means that you are looking for something. You might be desiring somebody else because you think they have something you don't have. The thing is, attracting love is really about becoming love and about being in alignment and being in your passion. When you're being the real you, those blocks begin to go away. And you will feel desirable because you will feel worthy. Worthy. The word worthy has the word worth in it. And worth is associated with value. Are you valuing yourself? Are you putting out great stuff into the world? Are you passionate? You have worthiness and you have value just by being you. Everything in our reality has a purpose. Nothing was done by accident. And when we realize that, the trees, the plants, the, the bees, the, all that shit, it all has a purpose, including you. And sometimes it's funny because people will say, no, okay, I agree that everything in reality has purpose except for me. That's significance. Everything but me wanting to be, it's like a significant thing. And instead look and realize you have worthy, just you are worthy for just being you. Just like everything else has value. You have value too. So a lot of these. So yeah, someone says the, the I think, but I think the biggest problem is not being able to know what your biggest block is. That's a story in of itself. So if you believe that finding blocks is hard, then it'll be hard to find blocks. Most of your stories, by the way, are right in front of you. If you have blocks finding love, then you can guarantee, oh, there's a block there. You, then you're aware of it. There's some type of block. Well, what I have to believe is true to, for me to have this reality. If somebody is treating you bad, what would you have to believe is true to have someone that treats you like shit? What would you have to believe 
uh, if you have somebody that's emotionally unavailable? What do you have to believe if you are really afraid of getting rejected and you're not even going out to begin with? Like these are all really in front of you. But if you believe there are these deep subconscious things that are under the surface, then they will be. But this is the key and this is one of the things that really changes everything is when you become aware of these things. Now, there is also something, five confidence secrets. The thing, confidence means to trust. Confidence comes from the word trust and it means to trust yourself. And there's confidence secrets that will make you attractive and that will help you feel that sense of self-love on the inside. If you haven't checked out that video yet, you can click it here. It's one of the most powerful videos I've made and watch it because it will change your life. People feel what you feel about you. The energy inside of our bodies are contagious. And based on how we feel about ourselves, that energy is being emanated out and other people are responding